Hi, everybody, and welcome to Schumacher's Spring Press Preview, NPFM Spring Press Preview. I don't know how many of you know, but we have a sister rug brand, so we're going to be presenting our new rug designs today, as well as our fabulous new wall coverings and fabrics and trims. And we have some very special guests with us today. Um, we have uh, Bridget Cochran, who's here from Porter Telio. She's a partner. We have Molly Marn from Sussex, England. And uh, you may have met her before, but she's here to present her new collection. We have Pamela Marshall, who's our VP of Design at Schumacher. Hi. We have Claire Yingling, who is our merchandising director at Patterson Flynn Martin. And then we have Clara Berglund, who, if you haven't met her, she's our new PR manager at Schumacher. So um, we're really excited to have you here today. I hope you're all faring okay. So we're going to get started. The first collection we're going to show you is Bohemia, and Pam is going to take you through that. Great. So Bohemia is one of our favorite, I mean, all of our collections are our favorite collection, but we love Bohemia, um, especially right now. It's just so vibrant um, and colorful, and it's really a celebration of color and pattern and craftsmanship. Um, there's a lot of embroidery and um, a lot of texture. Um, so Castanet, um, this actually was in our line previous to um, this collection. So uh, this is a really nice, sort of take on a traditional Suzani. So it's a clean modern uh, silhouette version and it has this like double mirrored um, motif. Um, Suzani actually is from the word Suzanne that translates to needle, um, hence the embroidery piece and um, hard to see on the screen, but this has a very rich tight looped texture. Okay, okay so Cosima embroidery. Um, this is really intricate and like a multi-process um, stripe, which is a really great scale and easy to use. Um, so it's in the spirit of Europe, uh, Eastern European textiles. Um, it's a jacquard weave with an overlay of intricate embroidery. So parts of the stripe is are woven and then parts of it are embroidered on top. Um, what I love about this is the combination of regular and irregular color placement. If you look closely at the stripe motif, it just has, um, it's not like a typical set um, repeat and color placement. Um, and the plain stripe uh, that goes in between the pattern stripes is a really beautiful ribbed um, weave. Kuzma, so this is a really heavy um, upholstery fabric. Um, so this is created in the way, uh, the same way a traditional uh, kill and flat weave is, and it is based on an antique kill and flat weave. Um, we extrapolated some of the motifs. So it's a very thick, chunky warp in a natural color crossed with these very thin, brightly colored wefts, which gives it a really um, textural weave. Um, and each motif, if you look, even though they're all diamonds, is slightly different because the placement of color is different in each one, giving it a really unique um, and handcrafted quality. OG embroidered tape. Um, so just a really fun version of a traditional uh, OG motif. Um, so this is actually a fil coupe, which means to cut. So the way this is made is um, for the fringed areas, they're actually embroidered um, through the fabric as like a loose satin stitch. And then it's trimmed by hand um, to create the fun little fringe. Um, and the base tape is a cotton with a really fine um, file in the weave. So Orla, this is a wall covering panel that's uh, 54 inches wide by 12 feet high, also with that kind of traditional um, folk arty sort of mirrored repeat. Um, so these were based on, there's a town in Poland um, called Zala Zalipia and the entire town uh, has hand painted homes. They paint the insides of their homes, the outsides of their homes, the dog houses, everything is covered with these really beautiful folk art, um, traditional floral motifs in this type of repeat, flowers, butterflies, leaves. Um, so that was where the inspiration for this came from. Um, and it's a really unique wall covering panel. So Sandor Stripe, um, this is also 
a very, it's really vibrant, but a very sophisticated stripe. This is actually a full width. So there's just this wide embroidery panel um, going down the center. And what's really nice about this, this is also a combination um, woven and um, embroidery. Uh, so it has a balance of like, you know, color and sophistication. So it has, it, it's a combination of jute and cotton. Um, so it has a jute weft, which is a natural color, and then the bright colors are woven um, in the warp. And it kind of tempers the bright colors, um, you know, keeping it just like grounding them a little bit. And then the motifs themselves um, are embroidered on top of the, the larger woven stripe. Um, to leave the tape, uh, so this was taken from a small section of a silk document from our archives from the 1920s that had a whole bunch of different um, embroidered motifs on it. And there was something really fresh and modern and graphic about um, these particular motifs. So we mirrored it, um, put it together, and then had it embroidered on a linen ground um, just to keep it a little more fresh and modern and usable. Um, and these are new colorways of the existing pattern. Um, tarpon tape, uh, love this tape. So this is inspired by the sash of an antique um, Eastern European dress. So also in this very traditional mirrored weave. So there's these little vignettes of fun animals and flowers um, mirrored and then repeating throughout the tape. Um, so it's really representative of the types of groupings that would happen in these Eastern European embroidery charts. Um, and then keeping it authentic by having it done in a cross stitch on a linen ground. And then Tiana, um, another traditional mirrored and symmetrical layout. Um, this embroidery is really nice. It has a sense of um, texture through the stitching. It's done with a slightly thicker yarn. Um, even though it's not heavy, the thicker yarn gives it texture and adds um, some really nice elements to it. Um, it's also nice, like it's a very large repeat, but the motifs themselves are not that large. So it's very easy to use, you know, for curtains or light upholstery or in a variety of ways. Um, and it has a little bit of a lacy effect without being too precious. Um, oh, that was the wall covering version, sorry. This is the embroidery. So it comes in a printed wall covering as well. Finca embroidery. Um, this is sort of the centerpiece of the collection. Um, it is a very, very dense, colorful, detailed cross stitch in a wide stripe. So this goes two times across the cloth. So it could go um, up the back of the centers of chairs or benches. Um, it has stylized flowers and stripe motifs that also would be found in some of these um, antique cross stitching charts. Um, but every single cross stitch is really dense and really small and it just, um, it's so, so vibrant in person. And this is on a cotton ground. It's such a great collection. So, um, Natura is a quieter collection. It's, um, one of the things that I love about working at Schumacher is that you get to explore many different personalities, design personalities. And we've really made an effort over the last five years to do some more patterns that are quieter, more laid back. I mean, we're known for our, our pattern, obviously, and our color, but, um, we feel like, there's a place in the world for quieter things too. And so we've made a concerted effort to bring back, bring out some things that speak to that. And because these are quiet, you'll see that they're kind of hard to see on the screen. And I did want to mention that if anybody wants memo samples of any of these patterns, Clara would be happy to send them to you. So um, feel free to ask for them. So this fabric bohai striped sheer is the most beautiful casement that I've really, I mean, I'd love to use it in my own house. It has this incredible heft to it and a beautiful um, drape to it. And that, then it has this wonderful shoelace um, yarn going through it that makes it really interesting. So if you want something quiet, but luxe, that's still got some, you know, it has great body, be great, great curtains. It's really a curtain fabric. Um, and then this is Co Coquina Performance. So this is treated with a performance um, finish so that it's stain resistant. And what's really cool about this, this is a rather small pattern. There's 
little shapes or maybe an inch high or so, but it has um, different widths of yarn. So you get this great nubbiness to it. And then it's space dyed so that the color, the yarns are space dyed so that the color um, is uneven. And so it has this wonderful artisanal quality to it. And then this is Sangomar applique. And what's really cool about this is that it's really two fabrics. So the, the colored part of that fabric is a, is a cotton and it's cut out and then appliqued onto a twill fabric. So this whole pattern, you know, everything has to be cut by hand and, and then stitched on top of the other. So it's a traditional applique. And even though it looks pretty simple, it's actually complicated. And there's another slide next that shows it on some pillows where you can kind of get the sense. So you can see the texture of the twill underneath and then the simple cotton that's been applique on top. And then this is a wonderful embroidery. So it's Vento embroidery and um, those hexagons, are they hexagons or octagons? I actually think they're ox octagons, but they're probably, I don't know, 14 inches across maybe. And what's really cool about this is that it has French knots. It's like really chunky, fun French knots. And so um, it has, it's again, it's a casement fabric, so perfect for curtains, but it just has like a, a wonderful um, texture to it and a little bit of a design, you know, like just for somebody who doesn't love lots of patterns, this is the perfect thing just for them. We are really excited about this new collection that we've done with you all. This is our second collection. So we have some new patterns and then we also did some uh, recoloring of some of the things from the first collection that had um, been well received. Portatilio is a line of hand painted wall coverings and textiles. Um, a lot of our pattern is really large scale. Um, sometimes a smaller repeat can be hard to achieve in a hand painted collection um, because every panel of our wall covering is made one at a time. So it's been great to work with you all and um, be able to explore these kind of smaller repeats and using our materials um, in a way that isn't necessarily achievable within our own line. So these are images of some of the original artwork. Um, in creating our collection with Schumacher, we start in much the same way that we would if we were creating a new collection for our own line and, and that we're making these small paintings um, the difference is that within our own line, we may have um, numbered panels to create a repeat. And for these collections, we're creating half drops. So, um, you know, trying to get your original artwork to, to move in that direction as much as it can and then finishing up the details digitally. Um, on the left, you have the original artwork for our pattern called filigree. Um, and then when you see the new colorizations of that, you'll see that, you know, had been uh, altered a little bit, but this is where um, the original design started. Um, you can see kind of some areas that we used white out to thin lines and, and some areas where we filled in with pen, but the original artwork for both of these was done with India ink. And then on the right, we have um, the original painting for the pattern circuit. So then this, um, I believe is the, textile version of circuit. One thing that we love about working with Schumacher is the way that they, your team really works to um, keep the integrity of the interpretation um, from our artwork to the printed goods. Um, and I think you can see there's such a, a beautiful transparency um, in the painting that really translates well into the, the printed textile here. And then we also did a printed wall covering. And again, we're painting on a really toothy Japanese paper. We get a lot of texture in the background, um, even from just a, a straight application of ink onto that paper. And I love how that's interpreted here as well. It's kind of hard to see on the screen, but um, there's the most subtle texture in the background of these wall coverings. They, they um, are far from you know, two flat colors on top of one another. This is filigree. And this is um, a pattern that was part of our first collection with Schumacher. It's, it's based on a 
It's based on one of the patterns in our collection that is based, based on a Franz Klein painting. Um, and again, this is a really great way for us to work with these smaller repeats. Something like this that would have to match up, you know, 20 times down a side, down the side of a roll of wall covering would be very hard for us to achieve. So it's um, kind of freeing to work with you all too and be able to explore these different tighter patterns. This is a pattern called Ink Splash. Um, you know, in, in working to create this collection with Schumacher, we really try to be inspired by our materials and, and the rich pigments that we use. Um, <clears throat> we, our line is known for being very bold and colorful. Um, and so that's what you're seeing here, just going out on a limb with some pretty bold color and an all over pattern. Um, that, you know, can be used in many different ways, but then also has a nod to um, our painterly feel. And this is a wallpaper, right? Yes, and I, I'm not sure if we yeah. did a textile here too, did we? Or Pam, did, did we? This? Yes, there's, a t there's also a fabric. Oops. Okay. So this is the wallpaper and then this is the um, fabric. Okay. And again, I just point out the, the detail that um, the detail in the translation, even the little tiny splatters coming off of the ink splash is amazing. And we, we uh, have loved seeing it come together like that. This is called Stellar. Um, this pattern was created um, by dropping ink onto a, a background of our Japanese paper that was <clears throat> wet, but hadn't been coated in an ink yet. So we were really able to get this effect of the absorption of the ink into this really um, textural background. And so that's something that we wouldn't be able to do in our own line. We would have to paint the background first because um, having the paper, having our paper installed on a wall without a background painted on it would, it's too absorbent and, and it would cause problems. So. It was really interesting to be able to use our pigments to get these really neat marks um, with on a wet background that hadn't been coated. And we loved the, the uh, overall effect. It's also, again, a small repeat that would be hard for us to achieve. And I, I love too how, when you're looking at these in, in large sections, the um, repeats are such that you really can't identify them right away. So it's it's giving the same effect as a large mural, which is what we create in our own line um, because it's very hard for the eye to trace the repeat. Um, this next pattern is tracing stripes. Um, what I love about this is we, we all decided that we liked the original artwork, the original painting, um, but within the stripes, we weren't getting the the differences in opacity within the ink. It just wasn't giving us the, the visual difference that we were looking for. So we went back and created a different set of artwork in order to get all the play within the stripe, giving the rich texture that we were able to get with the evaporation of our pigments. So I think this turned out really nice. Um, it's playful, but you know, it's a stripe and that is um, not, not ever a bad thing to have included in a collection. So, and I believe we did a, a wall covering and a fabric here. All right, well, Bridget, congratulations. It's a fabulous collection. Oh, thank you so much. It was really great to put it together with you all. Cut and pattern velvets. Um, Schumacher um, has become quite well known for velvet. Um, and we put out uh, several every single year through, you know, lifestyle collections as well as um, velvet specific collections, which this is. Um, and the focus on this collection was really variety. So a variety of motifs, a variety of techniques, uh, materials and um, scales. Um, Axis Velvet, uh, so this is based on a deer skin and we, um, actually hand painted the artwork first just to get that sort of natural quality of irregularity um, in the dots and then um, worked really hard to 
create an ombre um, that centers, you know, from the center of the stripe and gets lighter as it goes outward um, so that it isn't too, I guess, uh, straight. So there's a little variety and the tones start to blend together as you go out. Um, and then also put a lot of thought into the material. Um, because it's a deer, uh, we didn't think it should be uh, dressy or fancy. Um, and we did this in a linen. Um, so the linen pile uh, gives it a really beautiful rustic feeling. Um, and this is woven on a traditional wire loom, um, which is, there's not very many left in the world. And the dots themselves are the loop. Um, so the wire on the loom, the loops go over the wire. And where there's pile, um, a razor sort of cuts the pile. Um, and a lot of thought has to go into how much pile there is versus how much um, loop there is because the wires themselves heat up and can actually um, singe the pile. So a lot of thought goes into the engineering um, of the production of these. Uh, Butterfly Epinglay, love this one so much. So this is based on a pillow from the, I think the 1970s, Dara, that you had yeah. found in an antique shop. Um, so it was the original pillow was needlepoint and we loved, um, you know, how the needlepoint, how butterflies translated in that needlepoint look, um, plus, you know, the bright, vibrant colors that you get. Um, so we, we interpreted this as an epinglay. So an epinglay is actually an uncut pile. So it is still woven on a velvet loom. So it's all loop. And epinglay is actually extraordinarily hard wearing um, as an upholstery fabric. We like to call it the original high performance fabric. Uh, Florentine chevron velvet. Um, so this is a pullout. Um, we did an all over of a velvet called Florentine velvet from uh, Tim Corrigan's last collection, which is actually um, this chevron in a stripe form, um, which the chevron itself is a really great scale and we just thought it would make a fantastic all over. It's so easy to use. It translates into a lot of interiors. Um, so this has pile, um, so the fuzzy velvet part loop and then a cut area to um, just fabric in a really beautiful taffeta weave. Tropical leaf epinglay. Um, this is also a really unique take on an epinglay. Um, we wanted to do something unique with a traditional um, tropical leaf motif, which typically you find in prints. Um, so we translated it into a, a, an epinglay again instead. And it has this really bold, cool, like Palm Beachy feeling. And then it's very hard wearing. So, you know, putting it on upholstery. Um, it lasts a long time and you get the bold vibrant color um, to go along with it. Yeah, and the scale of this looks small, but it's actually, um, those leaves are probably what, how long, 14 inches or 10 inches, something like yeah, that? Yeah, I'd say they're like about a foot each or so. Kashgar Ecot, so this is one that um, has been in our line and we added new colors. This is actually a printed Ecot, so it really allowed us to um, incorporate more colors and tonality than you usually would be able to if you were to weave the velvet. Um, so it's a cotton pile and it's a really interesting take on a traditional Ecot where we had um, broken up a Chevron Ecot into strips and then stepped it. Um, so I guess each strip is probably about three inches or so. Um, very, very also easy to use. Um, these two new colorways are like these analogous colors. So they fit very well um, into a lot of different interiors. Uh, Samar Ecot Velvet. So this one is based on section of a traditional Ottoman. Um, it's actually like an Ottoman kimono that had several different patternings on it. Um, and we pulled out a section and created this stripe. Um, so also printed, allowing us to really incorporate many, many colors. Each stripe with, um, you know, from like the bowl, the smaller colored stripe to the next, I'd say is about 15 inches or so. We worked a lot on the repeat to make sure that you would get two of these smaller stripes if you were to put this up the back of a chair, for example, that it would um, fit and center. Um, so within each chevron, um, you can really see the ecot sort of texture, um, and then there's extra tones in each color. So it looks like a really rich woven ecot, although it is printed on velvet. 
uh, wooden, woodland leopard. Um, this is my favorite one in the collection. Um, so this is based on, we took some motifs from an antique tapestry um, and you know, with the express purpose of having a mirrored repeat, um, we wanted a leopard, um, something exotic, but not too tropical. Um, so we incorporated these leopards with this um, stylized tree and the leopards themselves are loop. Um, their spots are piles, so you get a lot of dimension and texture in there, and then with an all velvet ground. That's my, my favorite too, and I love their expressions. So fun, so cute, but sophisticated at the same time. It is. We work hard on those faces. It's, it's a delicate balance so that they don't look too cute, they don't look too angry. <laughs> um, so yeah, we were happy with those. And the scale also um, very easy to use, would fit on a lot of different sizes of furniture. So Royal Silk Embroidery. So at Schumacher, we always try to do things that sort of um, are outside the box. And we've been talking for a long time about creating a collection called the Masterpiece Collection, where we really do things in the most beautiful, difficult way possible and in ways that are almost lost, you know, um, in techniques that are really hard to, to come by and um, take a long time. So we were trying to figure out our very first masterpiece and what we were gonna do for it. And I was on the internet and I don't know what possessed me, but I, I think I was searching for, for um, English royalty or something like that. Maybe I had been watching The Crown or <laughs> I really can't remember, but I was looking up Richard the Lionhearted and then I came upon all these incredible hand hooks, rugs with mythical beasts. And then I landed upon this painting from 1599 of Queen Elizabeth I. Um, it's by a painter named Hilliard, and I looked at her dress and I was completely taken by it. And I showed it to Pam and we decided that it would make the most amazing embroidery. And so that's what we did. We created a really beautiful embroidery. Um, it doesn't repeat from side to side. It repeats vertically, but not horizontally. And we interpreted all the incredible mythical beasts in Queen Elizabeth's dress um, as an embroidery. And what's so, what's so cool about it is that the ground is handwoven. It's handwoven out of silk and linen. Um, it takes 25 artisans to make this between the weavers, the dyers, the embroiderers. Um, so it's really a feat. It takes 30 weeks to make 100 yards, which is also amazing. And it has 58 hand dyed silk colors. So it's not for everybody. I mean, I think it's really special. I do think it would make the most amazing curtains, but obviously a really beautiful pillow too. Um, and I hope that people will like it, but um, we really captured, you know, Pam and her team captured all the eccentricities of the animals, you know, the strange sea beasts and the wonderful um, hair. And I don't know, every time I look at it, I see something new and I just think it's, it's, magical and um, perfectly eccentric. I mean, look at that little leopard too. I just love it. <laughs> so that's Royal Embroidery. Worldview 2. Um, so this is our second Worldview collection. And um, this speaks to, um, you know, to pulling from global motifs and techniques um, and colors, very easy to live with. Um, you know, this one has a little bit of geometry to it, but it's still softened um, through materials um, and weaving um, and color. Um, Ogden Boucle. So um, we have we're very, very excited about these boucles. Um, They're extraordinarily soft. Um, and what's special about this one is that um, you can see on the right, we have the traditional ivory. Um, it's a very deep, rich boucle. Um, and the yarn itself is sort of thick and thin. So you get variety in the size and texture of the loop. 
Um, and the one on the left, we were able to twist different color yarns together. So you get this sort of really beautiful melange, um, but the gray is soft enough, like it doesn't um, jump out or anything. It, it just has a very, very beautiful effect. Leyland Stripe. Um, so this is a casement weight fabric. Um, and this is actually also a super interesting take on a fil coupe, which is a very, very old world way of weaving. Um, usually the fil coupe will be on the back. So it weaves um, with the floats sort of trailing across and then they're cut after weaving um, to reduce the weight of the fabric. In this case, it sort of highlights that technique and makes it part of the design. Um, so you have this sort of irregular weave um, in the background and then super thick yarns weaving through at, um, you know, varying kind of random intervals. And then after it's woven, they're clipped and you get these little fuzzy fringes on the ends. Um, but the colors are really wonderful um, and it, it makes for a really artisanal rich fabric. Elko plaid, um, so similar technique, but in a much more sort of organized fashion and not as thick yarns. Um, so there's a slight texture in the ground. It's like a linen cotton blend. Um, and then the stripes, the, um, sorry, the yarns that are creating the plaid, like the stripes going um, vertically and horizontally are space dyed. Um, so you get this very irregular kind of placement of color that adds to the texture. Um, so then it's woven and clipped and there's this uh, fuzzy little fringe that runs down the vertical portion of the plaid. Durant embroidery. Um, so this is an interesting take on a corded embroidery, which is usually done with a very um, smooth cord. So the cord is actually laid down and then stitched to be held down on the fabric. It's almost like appliqueing with yarn. So the ground is a really beautiful drapey linen. Um, and then the cord or thread making the motif is a boucle thread. Um, so that's laid down and stitched, um, you know, held down to create the geometric pattern. Um, and it really gives it a little bit of extra texture and also, you know, keeps it looking the geometric. It softens the geometry and gives it a really beautiful rustic um, texture. So this makes amazing curtains. Um, you could probably put it on a bench and maybe um, a tight side chair. Dixon printed embroidery. Um, so we've been experimenting a little bit more with the combination of print and embroidery, um, but you really, really have to have the right design to do it so that it still looks um, sophisticated and elevated. Um, and we're very, very excited about this one. Um, so this goes like this individual motif will go twice across the cloth. It's fairly large scale. Um, it's on a heavyweight linen, and then the printed part is in the center um, of these motifs. So it is uh, hand printed with a screen um, with um, a pigment dye. So it has a really rich color um, and isn't flat. So it looks a little bit modeled, um, adding to the artisanal quality. And then the outlines that are embroidered are done in this very dense, um, kind of loop texture, but it's tight enough that it's not going to pull. Dakota stripe embroidery. Um, so this was based on some antique rug motifs that we pulled out and created um, this really beautiful stripe. Um, so this is also a combination of a jacquard weave with embroidered um, accents. So there's a really big variety of kind of weave textures. And then like these little diamonds, um, the edges of them, those are embroidered. So they raise up a little bit from the rest of the fabric. It's a linen cotton blend. And the scale is also really, really easy to use for, um, even though it's embroidered, it just has a little bit and it's very tight. So you could use this for upholstery, um, headboards, benches, um, Roman shades, you know, the scale and the technique make it pretty versatile. Coleridge. Um, so this comes as a woven and as this um, wall covering. So this had, the woven version has a lot of texture. It's actually quite small. So each one of these sort of um, sections is just a couple of inches high. Um, and if you look at it closely, it's based on a traditional, um, you know, 3D kind of tumbling block motif that was just kind of disassembled and reassembled to create this pattern. This is printed on a sisal ground. 
And within the CISL, we thought a lot about how this would print um, so that you would really see the texture and modeling and that it wouldn't look too flat. So there's actually um, four colors printing in the background combining um, that, you know, some are a little darker and some are a little bit lighter, but it adds to the depth and richness um, on top of the sisal ground. And this is the woven version. Um, this is actually quite interesting also. It really looks embroidered, but it's a jacquard weave. Um, and this also, it's this combination, the yarns are twisted, some are darker, some are lighter, and there's um, some slight slubbing in it. And the weave itself um, has some, some breaks in it so that you get this really, really rich texture, even though it works almost like a solid fabric. And Bensley boucle. So the second boucle in this collection, um, these yarns are space dyed and you can see sort of like if you use space dye um, yarn to knit a sweater, the same thing happens where it starts to stripe across in these very random um, patterned ways. Um, so we have, I would say each yarn is dyed with about five or six colors combining. Um, so if you pulled the yarn apart, you would have like the darker color, the lighter color, um, just it's almost like tie dyed. And then when it's woven, it creates these really beautiful striations. Um, and this boucle also is incredibly, incredibly soft um, and makes a great upholstery fabric. All right, next we have Molly Moore with us. Molly is one of our most prolific um, collaborators, I would say. And uh, everything she does, she does with joy. So welcome, Molly. Thank you. So yes, I'm really, really thrilled to um, be sharing my new Greencombe collection. I've named it Greencombe. Um, a coombe is a green verdant valley that you find all around the UK. And it felt like a really fitting name. I really wanted to celebrate the great outdoors. I love gardens. Um, I feel most at peace when I'm outside. And so to be able to celebrate that kind of the, the wonderful things one sees throughout the seasons and combine it with the colors and the joy that I get on my trips to India was a sort of wonderful bringing together of everything. Um, and so all my patterns are created from drawings that I do here in my studio in Sussex that are then translated into wooden printing blocks in India. And they're all hand block printed on print tables that are 15 meters long and we can print up to one 25 meter piece at a time. And I think we're gonna dive straight into one of the designs. Oh, well, here we go. So this is the process. This is actually me sampling all the different colors. So once all the blocks have been carved, I go to India and um, stand at the table and we trial all the different colors. And I'm a very visual person. I like to be at the print table, seeing how the colors react with each other. And so this is a sample cloth. It's rather beautiful in its own right of trying out different designs and colors. This again just shows a bit more of one of the kind of sampling of the cloth. This is one of our designs we're going to see um, the other colorway as well in a minute called strawberry. Um, it feels, I process, if this is possibly my favorite design, it feels so kind of um, nostalgic and perfect for now, the idea of being outside and having a picnic and all the kind of wonderful fruitfulness that comes with summertime um, is sort of embedded into this design. And I've gone for a slightly different sort of weavy pattern down the cloth, which is quite new to me, but I'm really pleased with how that one's turned out. So this first design is called Berry. And again, it's a sort of wonderful celebration of all the colors that I like to combine together. So that for me, that perfect kind of fitting of red and pink and green with that sky blue. And then I also like to play sometimes with the same color, but in two different tones. So we've got the blue in the middle. Um, it's a really, really simple, quite small repeat. There's something about a spot or a dot that I find has this amazing energy. And when combined with the perfect imperfections that you get from block printing, it gives it this sort of wonderful movement across the cloth. I love the idea of using this on the back of a cushion with one of our bigger, bolder designs or on the back of the curtain. 
This one's called Dianthus and comes in these two colorways. Again, this is my kind of combination of um, a carnation, which my parents have always adored and always had in their home. And that kind of Mughal motif of a flower that you see uh, in India. And I've pulled them together and combined two color palettes. One obviously is, is very joyful and one I feel is slightly more kind of earthy and a bit more sophisticated, but still carries that joyful charm that I adore to play with. So we love we love, we love animals, but we're, I'm very cautious about sort of motifs, but we have in previous collection, a Mawari horse that's, that's gone, down, gone down really, really well. And um, it works on fabric and on wallpaper. And I can't resist these sort of, it's the idea of those little printing blocks that you find in the markets in Jaipur. And so again, I just, I've simplified this one down actually quite a bit. And there's something about the kind of power and magnificent of an elephant that also combines with the power of nature and therefore I felt it fitted quite nicely into this green collection. Really fun for a child's room. This one is called Garden Path and it's a sort of take on almost like a pathway through a garden leading your eye kind of along the garden path or equally the idea of a ploughed field. Um, I often drive out to the Cotswolds or down to Somerset and you see these great expanses of ploughed fields and where the earth's been lifted up and I love a stripe as much as I love a spot and I always think it works really well in conjunction with the big floral design. So again we're putting this onto the back of the cushions or on the inside of the curtain um, and the two colorways can match and work really well together. And it's my classic take on a sort of perfectly imperfect stripe. This one is called Poppy and comes in three different colorways. And I um, as well have been very inspired by all the Mughal paintings and artworks that um, I see more and more of, or perhaps painted on a building when I go to Jaipur. And it's actually quite a large repeat. This is probably the biggest pattern that I've ever created. Um, and I've tried to give it a more modern twist in terms of the colorways used, but it's, it's really celebrating those incredible uh, Mughal flowers. And this one, you can't quite see the detail, I'm afraid. In the back of this, it's got this really sweet, very light blue dotted pattern that's created this underlay weaving pattern underneath. And it's called Primrose. And at the beginning of spring, they're just sort of passing now, but my garden is filled with primroses. And they're such a kind of delightful flower. They really reflect new beginnings and hope and have a sort of sweet, innocent charm to them that I find quite nostalgic. And so again, it's worked really well. I've changed the colors. I mean, your classic primrose would be yellow, but I really love using green and blue together. And this has a slightly kind of old English chintzy feel to it that um, um, I hope will work really well. We've, we've, we put it over a huge four poster bed and it just looked so sort of inviting and nostalgic. So um, I, I love this one. It's, this one is printed on a much finer linen. Um, all of the fabrics are coming on either a very slubby, heavy linen or a mix of cotton linen or this one that's on this fine linen. And this one is called Seed. And again, it's my sort of perfectly imperfect version of a spot. Um, I find it has movement and energy in the way that none of the, um, the little seeds are kind of perfect circles. They're all, you know, they've got their all integrity in their own shape. Um, and again, it's sort of that idea of hope and new beginnings. And that's why we've called it seed and it works as well. Actually it working brilliantly on its own, but again, in combination with some of the bigger florals. And here's the strawberry. Um, I think this is the one that excites me the most. Uh, we've got quite a few colors. And so it's worth remembering that every color laid is a different carved wooden block and they all work in tandem. So we would have printed the stem first and then come back to print the red strawberry and then the pink strawberry. And that's how block printing work. It's all layering up of the colors. So the more there are, the more blocks that are involved and the more intricate the printing process is. Um, it's just a sort of really sweet, nostalgic pattern that uh, I'd like to start seeing in sort of adult as well as children rooms, I think. And this one's called Sunrise and it really kind of brings in another of my great passions, which is Charleston. 
um, a, a, a farmhouse down the road from where I live, uh, which is completely decorated in motifs. And they really celebrated the use of the circle and the stripes. And I wanted to kind of combine a bit of that. And certainly the colors have kind of been inspired from some of the colors that you see in Vanessa Bell's bedroom, for example. And it's just that lovely idea as well of the kind of shimmering light when the sun's coming up in the morning and we all need to get up and get going. And this one's called Trellis. And actually really it's sort of inspired by uh, a sort of tweed pattern. So a bit like you've got in one of your previous collections as well. It was that idea that I love woven fabrics and I love texture and block printing really can sometimes be sort of very flat. And I wanted to bring this element of um, imagining something that's got more texture in it perhaps has been woven. And so this one I think has worked out really successfully. It's got this kind of other level to it. Uh, and again, lovely playful colors. I adore going to Scotland and I wanted to bring an element of, of that into my collection. And then we've got Tulip. This one, I think I'd like to say is a bit more regal, but still has a playfulness to it. And it's a classic case of block printing, allowing this very kind of repeat pattern. Um, and they're sort of almost dancing these tulips. The repeat here is quite big. And I really focused as well on the kind of negative space, the space that's not been printed. And it's sort of a bit like um, an alcove you'd see in one of the doorways or windows in Jaipur in all the kind of carvings and everything that's going on. And I could, there were so many colorways that work for this design. Um, so we've offered these four, but I could have kept going with the com combining of the different colorways for this one. And then wild carrot, for me, this is really reminiscent of the sort of holidays in the summer and driving down uh, road in Cornwall or Devon with the high hedgerows either sides full of blousy um, wild carrot and cow parsley and all those lovely things that you see and then a sort of stems floating off into the blue skies and floating off up into the air. Uh, really simple one colour print and it's printed onto quite a heavy linen so it's a very sort of for me a very subtle um, a subtle print actually. <laughs> And so here we go, we, when we finished the collection, we, um, a very kind friend lent me their house and we completely decorated the whole house with the full Greencomb collection. And it really brought to life the fabrics that I'd done. And I was able to put them into the situation where I completely imagined them being used. And there's something really obviously luxury about the four poster bed with the dianthus. And it worked out just as I'd wanted it to. And we've really elevated our, fabrics as well by adding trims, which was something new for me to do. And then here on the other side with the primrose is that idea of having the seed on the back of the cloth and then the primrose on the front and just layering them all up. And because we've shared a color palette across all the designs, they can really work together. And there's the uh, wild carrot with the garden path um, as a leading edge down the inside of the curtain and on the window seat and cushion. And the one on the right is just a bit more of a close up of, of some of the cushions that we're making up with the fabrics. Well, you did it again. Wow, I'm so <laughs> impressed. They're so wonderful. Thank you so uh, much. Thank, thank you. Hi everyone, um, I'm so excited to be here today to talk to you a little bit about PFM. Um, so just to start, um, all are you know customizable. There, most of our designs are developed in house in our art department, um, and you know customizable from pattern, color, construction, um, and fiber. So we can go to the next slide. Perfect. So let's start. Um, this is our Loire rug um, in color spring. Um, appropriate for the season that we're currently in. This is a silken wool um, mixed texture and you can really see the silk that's in that sort of more silvery color um, that just really pops, which is really, really lovely. Um, and then on the next slide is Malbork, which is also um, a silken wool mixed texture. These were developed in tandem um, and designed in the, in the same collection. This is our Newport rug in color navy, um, very aptly named for this, you know, maritime theme, New England inspiration and spirit, um, and very indicative for, you know, a beach house, a summer house, um, 
things like that. And Abaca is, you know, one of the fibers that we're really known for um, playing with. And this is a more, you know, simple literal stripe pattern, um, but with the border, I think makes it really interesting. So this one is so fun. This is a lime, um, another abaca, coiled abaca um, rug. It's an extension of the lemon rug, which I know we've talked about a lot and gotten sort of a lot of buzz about, which was literally our director of design um, slicing lemons one day and just the way they all sort of fell out onto the cutting board um, and then sort of decided to extend that collection to include um, an orange, which is part of it, and now a lime. Um, this is our Adarissa rug in a natural rouge color. This is 100% hand knotted wool. Um, so anything in wool is super suitable for high traffic areas. Um, this is one of our newest product introductions and is also part of our upcoming Ojai collection, which we're launching um, June 1st. And that Ojai collection is really inspired by like this California chic laid back boho um, kind of theme. And um, this is one of the rugs that will be featured in that campaign. So this one, it's a bummer that the image, it's so hard to see. It has this beautiful carving um, throughout in this beautiful ivory. Um, it is 100% wool, hand tufted. Um, and I hopefully we may, we'll try to get a better image for next time, but the carving is just really, really beautiful. And in person, um, you can tell that it's really hand done um, and really intricate and detailed. These are um, Takama and Sakina, um, again, both in our upcoming Ojai collection for June. These are cotton and sisal or cotton and wool. Um, both are flat weaves, so perfect for that, you know, laid back California aesthetic. Um, this is Castite. This is a linen and jute flat weave, um, also part of the Ojai collection. I think these colors, these sort of like clay natural colors, um, just really, really work beautifully in, in this pattern together. Um, that kind of like literal clay color with that, you know, sort of minty green um, is just really, really pretty. And then Katorbi, um, this is another hand knotted wool rug um, for the Ojai collection. Um, I think the combination of the blues with this, you know, sort of burnt orange is, is really pretty. Blue for us is a color that we cannot sell enough of in floor covering. Um, and this burnt orange is something that we're really introducing a bit more and seeing a lot more appetite for this sort of color palette um, in, in our design, with our designers and in their projects. Manara, this is one of my favorites. Um, the color is called Humbled Multi. Um, this is a hand knotted wool rug. Um, I think, you know, the, the combination of the big diamond pattern in the middle with sort of how we, what we have on the border, this is shown in a nine by 12, um, is, is beautifully done. This is Kobe. The color is beige green. Um, it's really meant to look, you know, distressed, worn, um, like a very vintagey sort of rug. Um, it's wool and silk. It's hand knotted. Um, and this will also be part of our June Ojai collection. Parvesh, so I know that this is one that Dara really likes. Um, I think the colors are so beautiful. The image is, it, it's not popping as much as I would love, but it's a wool hand knotted um, and it's this really, really beautiful deep red. Um, and I think this in tandem with some of the other styles that we've looked at so far make the Ojai collection um, just really fun um, together. Okay, so this one is my, one of my personal favorites, Itty. Um, the color is Sunny Day, which I think is very appropriate for the upcoming summer months, um, perfectly named. It is jute linen and wool. Um, it's shown here in a nine by 12 size. It's mixed texture. So where the, you know, the yellow ground is, is a little bit of a different texture than actually those stripes that are sort of um, multicolored stripes. And then those, the diamonds that you see, those are actually sort of raised. Um, so it's a really interesting high-low pattern um, and turned out beautifully. We have this on the floor in our showroom currently and it's been a showstopper. This um, beautiful Lisan um, in color aqua. This is, um, I mean, the colors, 
I think speak for themselves, but this is a hand knotted wool rug, um, these beautiful bright shades of blue. Um, and this is one of our, our newest introductions um, that we have in developed and just launched. So this is our um, Korea rug. This is um, hand coiled abaca, this really interesting pattern. Um, it, the color is, it's more of like a mossy color. Um, and it has like these really imperfect sort of diamond shapes, which are a result of just the coiling of the abaca that I think um, makes for a really interesting pattern. I know we're running out of time. I just want to remind everybody just that we have ready-made pillows now and they've been incredibly successful. And it's one of the most fun parts of my job is creating pillows with the finished goods team uh, using our beautiful fabrics. And um, you can see a smattering. These are from a rum fellow. We have some from Johnson Hardig, some classics, some beautiful embroidery. So just keep that in mind. So thanks everybody. Thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate your, your being with us. Okay, bye now.